The first number for your lane, here we go. Six four, plane 16. For more than a century, generations of the Meadowell community have gathered at this club to sup its pints and play its games. <laughs> Tradition surviving against the odds. But the odds right now feel stacked against people here. Yeah, weekly shopping is just a joke now. Um, I'm not like putting pennies here and pennies here. It's like 10 pences and 20 pences, you know, and it all adds up. There's a couple of bob I'm saving, what I saved, I'm spending no to survive. 86-year-old Bob Costello was born and raised in North Shields. He comes here less and less now. His budget simply won't stretch. Come for this one day a week, yeah. 21 afternoon. This is your treat? This, this, is, this is my treat. Yeah. A blackcurrant. That's what I drink. So a pint of blackcurrant and black currant a bit of warm here. Cup and a bit warm comfort. Yeah. <laughs> this is 90% of people will need help, but there's a lot of not ask for it in this part of the country. Because I saw probably someone would rather starve. One and three, thirteen. We were invited here by Michael. We met him at the local Cedarwood Trust Community Centre, where he works as a full-time cook, making low-cost meals for struggling families. Struggles he's not immune to. How much do you put on the lecky this week? Forty. She puts forty pound on this week, and that'll last a week. Uh -huh. Energy costs are swallowing up Michael's wages. He's on a pay-as-you-go or prepayment meter. £48.83. So that's going to last you just over a week? Yep. And before that would last you longer? Over two weeks it would have. Really? Mm -hmm. Which is more expensive than receiving a monthly bill. 40 on the gas and 40 on the leg. Yeah. Right, that's £80. So that's 160 That's £320 a month. Good hell. Some of my friends, they're on rock bottom. And then they come to see the wood trust and we can help them a little bit. And it can only, it's only going to get worse, isn't it? When I was younger, it was like, we used to have a coat on my bed to keep yourself warm. Everybody would be able to relate to that. You have a big, thick blanket on it. And that's what it might end up being like. Because you can't put your electricity and you can't keep your gas going. One for gas and one for electricity. Right, can you put us 20 on each, please? 20 on each. Yeah. People spending more on bills means less is spent elsewhere in this community. There's four shops on this estate. Shaka has owned his for 30 years, but it's quieter now, and the price of his stock is becoming unaffordable. Before we're spending £10,000, now we're spending about £15,000, £16,000 because of the price. Do you worry about your business here? Do you worry? Yeah, of course. Of course. If it carries on like that, I think possibility. It might not cover itself at the end of the day. You might, you might close? Yeah, we will shut it. We'll definitely shut it. And how do you feel about that? Ooh, sad. Getting emotional? <laughs> it's how you love this community, that you're, this is the, this yeah. is your home. Yeah. You're right, Jacques. Yeah. My grandma started it in 1952 with me, with me granda. The yeah, R came on board in 1983 when I started. Two doors down from Shaka is Holt Butchers, a North Shields institution. Neil was born above this shop. It's reached a point where it's not worth carrying on. But he's decided to call it a day. It's heartbreaking to think that something like my granny started could cease. It's my um, bill's going to double uh, next month from about £30,000 for the four shops to over 70. It carries a big burden in my heart and uh, I've had a few sleepless nights over it. Oh, yeah. But it, it's definitely, um, it could be the end of an era. The knock-on effect of this economic crisis is being felt across this community. Back at the Cedarwood Trust, they run a shop selling discounted food and they've noticed a change in the families turning up. At the start, we saw a lot of people who were pensioners and on benefits. That has totally swung the other way. 50% of those people are people in work. It's in work poverty. We've got people who are on 16 hours a week work, on uh, paramedics, teachers, people who are frontline. Paramedics and teachers use this? Absolutely. And there's no slack in them budgets to pick up any of the extra costs.
It's something the GP surgery here has noticed too. Hello, how are you doing? Hi there. It's having an impact on people who haven't previously struggled. I had a patient the other week who started them on some antidepressants and was a review appointment to see how they'd got on and they hadn't been able to afford to pick them up because they literally hadn't been able to afford the prescription charge. And are you worried about the long-term impact all of this has? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think some of these problems are going to be, they're going to last for generations, um, which is a real concern. You know, we know that parental mental health problems have an impact on children. Um, we know that actually, you know, if you had a family member commit suicide, your risk of it is much higher. Back on the estate, we meet Sam. He's on universal credit, but the money he's receiving isn't keeping up with his bills. And this figure here, that's basically what you're living on. Yeah, that's what I'm living on at the moment. He receives £324 a month. He's in rent arrears and is facing the prospect of eviction. I'm struggling as it is. I can't afford to struggle more than I am now. That would just be unthinkable. You know, sometimes you don't even know what, you, what your action will be. And Sam is nervous of reports the government may make a real terms cut to benefits next year. How would you feel if the government were to do that? That, is, that would be catastrophic because they don't really know what is going on. Cutting it back would really send people to the tip, you know, tip people over. Some in this community are doing their best to make sure that doesn't happen. Just me, John. In his spare time, Michael delivers meals to people he knows are going without. Put them over here, John. Those without a lot, giving to others what little they have left. But how many others will go short in the long winter ahead? Daniel, there has been a big reaction to your report last night. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there will be to this one too, but it is clear that this crisis is having a huge impact on people's lives. Yeah, and I think that community and the many communities like it have faced tough times before. They still bear the scars, really, from the austerity years starting in 2010, where public services were cut back, but businesses got through, people got through. I think this crisis is different because this crisis is casting a much wider net. If you look at the stats on this, I mean, interest rates back in 2010 were 0.5%, so rents and mortgages were low. Energy bills on average were about £1,000 a year. Now they're £2,500 and rising. We've seen throughout this programme, inflation is soaring. Food prices are incredibly high. So every corner of these communities are being hit from every angle. But we know it's the poorest households being hit the hardest. Those with the lowest income spend a bigger proportion of their income on food. In food inflation is, is going up. And yet we still don't know. We still don't know from the government whether, inf whether benefits next year will be raised with inflation. You saw from what Sam said, there'll be lots of people watching tonight who feel the same, that if that doesn't happen, they really worry what will happen to them. Yeah, definitely. Daniel, thank you.